Constitution says, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the protection of the law. The sufficiency, the question of sufficiency on the complaint form may again be brought before the Senate by way of proper motion, and the Senate may deny the motion or dismiss the complaint depending on the merits of the motion raised. After the Senate shall have acted in due course, its disposition of the case may be elevated to this court pursuant to its just judicial power. Submitted, Your Honor. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank to you, Counselor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we will take note of your argument. <coughs> now the Chair uh, uh, will make a ruling. This is without prejudice to the issuance of an extended resolution of this uh, court within 48 hours. It appearing that the filing of the verified impeachment complaint was made in accordance with paragraph 4 of section 3, article 11 of the Constitution. There's no more need for a preliminary hearing to receive evidence on this matter. The Senate should forthwith proceed for that's the mandate given to us by the, uh, by the Constitution with the trial of the Chief Justice Renato Sigorona on the articles of impeachment in accordance with the mandate of the Constitution in view of the foregoing the motion for preliminary hearing filed by the Chief Justice Renato Sigorona is denied for want of merit so ordered Mr. President, I, may I now ask that the parties be directed to present their opening statements? Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. The prosecution shall now present its opening statement for a period of not more than 10 minutes, after which the prosecution may present its argument also for a period not exceeding 10 minutes. Proceed. Mr. Senate President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, good afternoon to all of you. Can I identify your, uh, sir? Your uh, my, name, uh, my name is Niel Tupas Jr. of Iloilo. As public servants, we took an oath to uphold the people's will at all times, all who hold positions in the government of a republic are accountable for their actions. For the power of the sovereign Filipino people is a power that is higher than the executive, the legislative, or even the judiciary. And therefore, no matter how high and mighty one's position may be, no one can ever, ever be beyond public accountability. Today, we lay down before the Honorable Impeachment Tribunal the product of the collective voice of the people. Impeachment of Chief Justice Renato Corona for betrayal of public trust, culpable violation of the Constitution, and graphing corruption is the verdict in the House of Representatives. By issuing such verdict, we took the first step towards the fulfillment of our oath as the keepers of the people's trust. Let me be clear, we are not here to indict the Supreme Court as an institution or to do battle with the judicial branch. We are here to search for the truth so as to restore the strength and independence of the judiciary. We are here because one man Chief Justice Renato Corona has bartered away for the pot of porridge the effectiveness, independence, and the honor of the Supreme Court. Mr. Senate President, Your Honors, one very important question before this honorable tribunal is by what standards should Renato Corona be judged? You only have to look at the Supreme Court itself to know the answer. 
as you climb its steps, you will see two statues. One of these is Cayetano Arellano, the first Chief Justice, a man of absolute integrity and of deepest legal wisdom. The other is Chief Justice Jose Abad Santos, who viewed his oath so sacred and loved his country so deeply. He, per he preferred to die at the hands of the Japanese rather than betray his country. The Supreme Court itself then views the position of the Chief Justice as beyond politics, beyond personal considerations, and always putting one's honor and justice ahead of every other consideration. Pagkatao po ang ating pinag-uusapan dito. The code of judicial conduct demands that a judge must be like Caesar's wife, someone who must not only be pure, but beyond suspicion at all times. A justice, therefore, should be judged according to the highest standards. Against such standards, we then ask, who is Chief Justice Corona? What kind of a man is he? Ano po ba talaga ang pagkatao ni Renato Corona? Chief Justice Renato Corona was a loyal servant to former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. From the time she became Vice President in 1998 until she became President in 2001. Such loyalty had numerous rewards for the Chief Justice. Imagine, she may paid for his back surgery. His wife was given plump positions in the Janhe Management Corporation. He was appointed Associate Justice. And the best reward of all, against all odds, he took a midnight oath as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Corona's appointment as Chief Justice also served an immoral purpose, that of shielding GMA from prosecution for her misdeeds during her presidency. The prosecution will show how Chief Justice Corona became the crowning glory of the cast of accomplices of fourth of former president, and how he protected GMA's interests in exchange for the position of prestige and power. This is at the heart of Article 1. This unholy alliance between the Chief Justice and GMA and Corona's deep indebtedness to the former president culminated in the issuance of the temporary restraining order to enable GMA and her husband to leave the country and escape accountability. This is Article 7. Corona's biggest favor yet to his benefactor. And in Article 4, we will show how the Chief Justice intervened in impeachment against former Ombudsman Gutierrez, also to protect GMA's interest. In Articles 3 and 5, we will show the lack of moral fitness of the Chief Justice when he committed acts of impropriety involving parties with pending cases in the Supreme Court. His mockery of the disciplinary institutions of the Supreme Court in the plagiarism case of an associate justice will be proven in Article 6. And in Article 8, we will show how he failed to account for the Judiciary Development Fund and the special allowances for the Judiciary Funds which are managed by the Chief Justice. Malinaw po, Kung gusto natin ang hostisya, hindi na dapat natin ipagkatiwala kay Chief Justice Corona ang pinakamataas na pwesto sa hudikatura. And finally, we come to Article 2, where the prosecution will prove that the Chief Justice amassed ill-gotten wealth after he was appointed to the Supreme Court in 2002. To give you an idea of this article, let me present to you some of the prized pieces of the Corona crown jewels. Spanish Bay, Bonifacio Ridge, acquired October 2005, purchase price, 9,159,940. McKinley Hill, Fort Bonifacio, acquired October 21, 2008, purchase price, 6,196,575.